At the convention there was a there was an untruth presented by Noel Pearson's model where Noel Pearson put up a model which said that um, you've got to be in the Constitution first uh, to do a treaty. Yeah? There was no way in which the, the floor was open to any type of um, opposition to that because they shut you down. And they were doing that all the time. Now, <clears throat> the, the fact that you know, no one was allowed to record any of the proceedings in that meeting um, sort of allows them to distort what really went on in there. And so Noel Pearson's model that he put up in there suggested that now we got, if we're going to do a treaty we've got to do it after we get, a const get included in the Australian Constitution. Not true. Um, he didn't say what the consequences would be once you, if you go down that pathway. But we've already done that research in the 80s, like I said, with the NAC. Right. Um, <clears throat> if we were to allow ourselves to go into that constitution, then what John Howard and Tony Abbott were saying, we can't treat him with our own citizens, will then become a reality. Yeah. Because we've given them consent and we've given them the authority to call us Australians once we go into that Australian constitution because we've consented to be governed by that, that their constitution. Yeah? And right now, we are outside that system. Right? That's a reality. That's not a myth. Yeah. Um, and so we get into the constitution, then they, they're not allowed to do a treaty with us as, because we are then citizens of Australia. What happens then is that they have to use the word compact or find a word like makrata. Um, and by doing that, it is not a treaty, it becomes a domestic treaty. It becomes a domestic arrangement, right, that we negotiate under their law because we lose all our rights to international protection under the human rights clauses and human rights conventions. We lose all those rights. Yeah. That's a reality. That's not a myth. Yeah. And so being domestic, then controlled by domestic treaties, we have these contracts then, or makaratas, or compacts, and then we negotiate, OK, what is it that we want? Um, but they are controlled by statute. And so we can get, you know, a, an absolute terrible Prime Minister um, who totally despises human rights and whatever we've, we've negotiated can be wiped out by the Parliament yeah, and the Senate and so uh, and, they, and they can make amendments um, to that law which will change the treaty, the terms of the treaty as well, or the contract rather not treaty. So so by being, getting controlled by the domestic process um, severely restricts us and um, denies us all those basic fundamental human rights that are, we are um, permitted to have and advocate for under international law. If we are to look at um, a treaty under the current constitution, yeah, then that we call for that treaty to be governed by the law of treaties, the Vienna Convention, and uh, we negotiate that treaty as um, non-Australian citizens. Right? And so we're independent sovereign peoples belonging to independent sovereign states. Yeah? And so what we can, what, what will happen then is when they go towards trying to establish a, a republic, for example, then the question that arises then is that 
If we do anything between now and when, when Australia becomes a republic, well then, what happens to those treaties? Because, you see, we no longer operate under the Constitution of Australia um, as it stands now. We no longer... So Australia is not, the, not a state. Australia becomes a republic, no? And they, they become a republic, they rewrite a new constitution. Then are we subject to... Will they write it in there that um, Aborigines of Australia are um, now to be classified as Australians? Yeah. Are we going to be part of the discussions on what's included in, the, in a constitution for a republic? Yeah. Um, or do we just sit there as you know, dummies like we have all this time and run around and you know, call the shots that they, you know, that they dictate? And um, we run around and say, oh, we don't have to be in the constitution. Um, no laws, what we do is we just put a clause in there and say that this constitution uh, recognises and continues um, the integrity of the treaties that have been signed under the former Commonwealth of Australia Act. Right? They can do that. Um, or do we renegotiate um, when they rewrite the constitution do we rewrite it with a very definitive um, constitutional um, uh, setting where the constitution recognises all those rights that we have in those treaties? Yeah. And, and, um, but we're, we're a little bit hampered um, and they need to go back to the NAC model because the NAC model was merely developing a national France framework. Um, and that framework was being being developed on the basis of community consultations, not regional conversations by by selected people. They were actually we went out and we sat. I sat in those little communities, Manpa, Docker River, yeah, Armata. We sat in those little communities. We talked to the people in those communities, and we had translators. We had elders who were translating, who could speak both English, yeah, and we had lawmen. <clears throat> who understood that, yeah? And they were there. They, we had proper translators, yeah? And so when I talk, they talk and explain it all. And then, and, and if they, people want to have a look, then really they sh someone should go and dig out all that NAC stuff and make it, make it public, yeah? They need to do that, right? But I, I do believe that, you know, they've, they've destroyed a lot of that stuff because we had a lot of community consultations around this country. Um, so <clears throat> we need then to ask our questions, and if we're going to become a republic um, in the near future, well then, okay, um, what do we do? So the position basically is that um, we then start all over again, yeah? Um, because quite honestly, I think it would be absolutely necessary to start all over again because I can assure you that the way in which they're going, they're, they're proposing it as it stands right now, if we don't have an independent operations and uh, independent consultations, then we're, we're in a bit of a bother because we're bound by what they're, what they're currently negotiating. And I think we, we absolutely um, find the need right now to to make changes to what's going on, and I think we we need to um, go at it hard and make sure that our voices are heard properly and the community. And that's why I suggest that you know what we do is we get no money, but there's nothing wrong with us having community meetings. Nothing wrong with it at all, and we can talk about it ourselves. <coughs> and then all we do is. We ask people, all right, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm brave enough to, you know, to even say, all right, community, let's, Noel Pearson's promoting this thing, let's bring him into our community, let him explain it, and then we, we listen to the other side as well. Why not? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not adverse to, to, 
bringing Noel Pearson into our community because he's the one pushing it, him and Neil, Mark Liebler, and we need Liebler there standing with him. We need this Zionist to be there. Yeah? Put him there at the table. Yeah? Put him there so that then he can talk about it and put their model up, and then we put up our opposing model and say, this is also true. Yeah? So, one does not counteract the other. We need to show that, yes, this is true, what Noel is putting up, and Mark Liebler, yes. Yes, what the old NAC negotiated and was putting up is also true. These are the options that we have to choose. Yeah? But, no, no. No, no, no. As it stands right now, he's saying that you have to be in the treaty. No, no, Pearson saying you have to be in the constitution before you can do it. No, that's an option. It's not the truth. It's it's an option. Yeah? But there's also another way, another pathway as well. So we need to look at both pathways. And we need to understand the circumstances of each. And the people need to understand. So that the people say, okay, all right, now we heard this debate here now. Then the next day, the people should be able to go away the next that night, that evening, that afternoon, sit down and yarn amongst themselves, <coughs> and then in that afternoon, the people need to then break up into a group and then raise all the questions that they need to raise. They need to workshop this thing, yeah, and say, all right, if we go this way, what this, what this mean, what this mean, what that mean, yeah. If we go this way, what this mean, what this mean, yeah. Then they need to bring that back the next day. Yeah? And say, all right, we on this one here, we're not sure about this here. Can you tell us more about this? And on this one here, can you tell us more about that? Yeah? But you have the two models sitting up there on the board, and you're discussing both of them at the same time. Yeah? So that then as it's going up, then you're assessing, you've got someone over here who's recording all of these questions, and the responses, how many are doing these responses? And then by the third day, the people can, the people be given that afternoon, get it all printed out, the two-way options, there, and then you put that report up and give it to the people, let the people then look at it, and from there, the people are in a position then to come back the third day and say, no, we want to go this way or that way. Yeah, done. Nothing wrong with that, and I think, I think, quite frankly, um, that's 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 a much better option. Yeah, and so I'm, I, I will um, put that to my mob and see if we can get that get that as an example. I'm, I'm prepared to sort of go home, and I'm, and I will, I'll go home and do that with my mob.